Good evening. I wrap Steen of Linder Associates with your Metals Market Wrap Up. And this wrap up's for Thursday, the 14th of May, 2020, time 5.40 p.m. Central Time. So as we look at the metal markets, these are numbers that are fairly impressive. We got into the 1740s in the gold. Silver's trying to break out. We'll discuss that in a few minutes. Uh, the copper market's coming to life, and so is the platinum. Now, the industrial metals are going to be looking over their shoulder at factories opening all over the country, auto factories opening. Wisconsin won a Supreme Court order. Their restaurants are open right on the corner of uh, where they border with Illinois. I know the residents from Illinois are probably flocking over the border at this point. As you look right here as to what's going on with the energies, the market is sitting up. We'll see if the rally can hold in the gasoline. I got some doubts about that right now. I think it might want to pull back here. We had a heck of a rally in bonds and notes, and they're giving a little bit up tonight. And in the foreign currency market, they might have gone down a bit too much today, maybe a bounce here, but the dollar has been reigning supreme. So as we take a look at gold on a weekly chart of just closes, and remember, we have one more day this week. Right now we're at 1739.20, which is over the highest close we've had of 1736.20. So the question is, is it going to hold and give us a new high close? I did my gold report. So if you go to our website at www.irapstein.com under the word research, you'll see our special gold video report. You might want to take a look at it. I looked at the August contract, but then I looked at the monthly, the weekly charts, the seasonal charts, give you a pretty big picture on what I'm looking at at the gold. And frankly, this is a bull market, and I know you're gonna not like what I'm hearing, but it's true, that began in 2015. It's when gold was, uh, what, 1,047, and it has since come up and gained about 70% since that time frame. That's what it's actually done. So as we take a look here, is this the beginning of the possibility of another leg? You know, when you got over this number, you began another leg up. You didn't take out these lows. You made one challenge of them. You came back up. I wouldn't expect this low to be taken out again if it's going to cross and work its way to higher numbers, which I don't see why it won't, because I believe so much bad economic data is ahead of us. I think that uh, we're going to still see a lot of government spending, and I understand the Fed's got our back, but where's all this money coming from? And we know the Treasury's out there raising a fortune in these auctions, trying to get another plan going. When we take a look at June gold, and I'm still in the June at this point because it's only May 14th, but the next contract's the August, and that's why I used August in the uh, gold report. You get to see what the picture looks like. And I think you'd agree with me. We're stuck between these two levels. Let's call it the 1665 all the way up to the 1785 level, right in that general zone. When we take a look at the swing lines, you get to see that the pattern is one of higher lows and higher highs. The trend is held to the upside. The key is not to get back under 1692.10. And as long as it doesn't, the question is how high is high? When we take a look at the 18-day average of closes, we've had a real battle in getting away from this. And you haven't been able to very long since all the way back in mid-April. I think you'd agree that here's a move where you got leverage to the upside. But from that point on, you've just been spinning your wheels. And the question is, is this a point where the market might want to move to the upside? In terms, can it? I got my doubts. Why? because our old friend, the Bollinger Band top, is here at 1751.30, and typically the first challenge of that number holds the market back, especially when you don't have super close Bollinger Bands. So I'm certainly not in the bear camp, but I think you're getting it, in fact, I think you've entered a resistance area right now. When I look at momentum, I get confidence in what I'm saying because you're overbought and the blue line is not close to the red so they're not going to cross over and embed anytime soon. It's just an overbought market 
getting into a key resistance area, and this could be a zone where the pros take some money off the table as they wait for the market action to define even more. The gold-silver ratio is favoring silver now to gain on the gold. It is trying to break out underneath this area right here. This is the first move where it's doing so. And when we look at silver, you on the close, you got up, and if we look at the settlement, 16, 15, 60, it's over the Bollinger Band of 1608. That's the first day over it. It's trying to stay over it tonight, and I don't know if it's gonna be able to. You need two consecutive closes that show you a thrust in it to give you an idea it's a breakout. Right now, it's acting as though the market's not going to be able to do that. So I'm expecting a lot of resistance between 1620, 1621.30 with an overbought condition. I think the pros are going to take some money off the table. I'd like to see a breakout to the upside, and I'd like to see an embedded reading. This can offer it soon. Gold cannot. This is a stronger market, but you're into a heck of a lot of resistance right here. In the copper market, it appears this market doesn't want to make a move to the lower Bollinger Band. I'm going to stick with what I said. I think these were the lows, barring another wave of COVID-19 coming in. And while this is May, you know, we have to all get worried about what's going to be in the winter time. But right now, COVID, if anything, not slowing down but not picking up dramatically might be the word. And we are seeing factories reopen. So there's a bit more demand. And where's the battleground? The 18-day average of closes. The market is not giving you a trade out of it, as I see that at least. In the uh, platinum market, you've got a pattern of higher lows and higher highs. Can the market stay over the upper uh, 18 day, not the upper, the 18 day average of closes is question number one. Question number two, you know what I'm, I hope you know what I'm going to say. This type of pattern generally chews the heck out of you. You, you think you're going to get a move up, it fails. You think you're getting a move down, it fails. This spinning action is, it's putting together kinetic energy, if you think about it, to break out of these bands. But in the process, a lot of false moves. These are the type of things that I tell my clientele you stay away from. In the Palladium market, you're oversold. You made a run today for the lower uh, Bollinger Band. You missed it by about $16. It looks like it's close. It's not. 16 is a long way off. Uh, the market, in my opinion, too oversold to want to do anything with. And I, that's all I can say. It's in a downtrend. Can it start an uptrend? Well, if we look at the low back here, that number was 1732. The current low is now uh, 1742.20. So the answer is yes, if you were to take out 1914. You gotta understand, that's $150. Too much risk to, to even worry about it. The point is, it's sort of just drifting around at this point. In the dollar index, we have the market still in an uptrend, but remember what I said, when you get these bands narrowing, you spin around, you don't get very far. If it rallies, I look for very strong resistance at 187. I look for support at 99.91, and you're overbought. Very hard to buy the market here to do anything. I see a market that is just sort of if you will, in no man's land at this point in time. As I said, I put together my special report, and it's a video report, and I did this one on the gold market. So in it, I looked first at the monthly chart. I'm giving you what I'm seeing there on formation, what it's looking like, and what's, what's nice about monthly charts is you can go back and see the major moves. And this market's in a long-term right now bull market that is five years old. And you'll see it as I show it to you, what it's there. I think the, you're not going to argue with that. The second thing, I go with you and I'm getting through the uh, then the weekly charts and I end up at the daily. So I'm going to show you 
what I'm seeing in the Bollinger Bands, the slow stochastic readings, the seasonals. I'm going to take you through the 30-year seasonal, the 15, the 5, and then I'm going to take you through bull and bear years. We're in a bull year. So you have to skew what you look like, what you're looking at in the seasonal and understand that when you're in the bull year, which one of the 5, 15, or 30 do you pay more attention to? And then I take you into the August gold. How do you look at it? Go to our website under the word research. If you have any issues, call my staff. They'll be happy to work with you. I'm I. Repstein. You have a great day, and I will talk to you all tomorrow.